with uh, Coach giving an opening statement, and then please raise your hands. We'll get the microphones to you, and I'll call on you for questions. Coach? Obviously very pleased with the, with the win. These, uh, very pleased with the win. Uh, obviously the first quarter was uh, very poor football on our end, but you also want to give credit where credit's due. And that's Miami Ohio did a really good job defending a certain formation that we ran. Uh, that's really our base formation, which is concerning down the road. We just got to make sure we make quicker adjustments, which we made some halftime adjustments. Uh, but they have some good players. A quarterback that we were concerned going into the game that uh, uh, the future NFL football player will be uh, will be hard just contained because he's going to throw the ball. He gets out real fast. Can't really get to him. And that's exactly what happened. But uh, I think one of the things about Braxton Miller that I really had to see and I did see today is that he, the objective with Braxton is to make him uh, to make him from an athlete playing quarterback to a quarterback that manages and that, that quarterback position is a unique position in all sports where he's got to manage so much he's got to manage the, basically the entire offense he's got to stay positive his leadership he has to be a leader and uh, and he showed that today I told him in the middle of the second quarter because he started uh, you know starting he kept positive even when it was uh, we all saw what it was and so. I'll certainly answer your questions for you. Clay? How big a play was the uh, Chris Carter-like catch by Devin Smith just to get you, ignite you, and if you would, a second one? How did the reality of this day measure up to what you thought it would be? Not the X's and O's, but the total experience. Well, the re unfortunately, not fortunately, right for whatever it is, but just like our first quarter, I was, you know, so embarrassed with the way the We worked so darn hard, and, and uh, we, we didn't play very well. In all phases, defense let a couple passes go that we should have. Uh, to answer your question about that catch, I don't know if uh, Devin's been saving that, but I'm not seeing him do that. So now that I know he can, I expect him to do that. But, uh, he's actually playing pretty good for us. So, so that was a wow moment. That was a moment that ignited the stadium. The stadium got quiet, our sideline got quiet, and we're waiting for a play to happen. He went up and made a play. Which was, uh, yeah, that's, that's football. The day overall was, uh, was a great day. Uh, hang on, Soupy kicked it off in the fourth quarter, and, and I stared at that for a while and watched it. Told a couple people that uh, I know I've never seen it before. Check that out. And uh, I just was, you know, goes back just a little disappointed in the first quarter. Back to that, what a great day, great. We enjoyed the win, and uh, we all know that it's difficult to win a major college football. So we got one, and now we get ready for next week. Jared, far right over here. Urban, I was actually curious. Uh, you mentioned the defense a second ago. The fact that they had one rush yard. But the big plays, maybe they're able to break those a little bit. We're, it, their scheme is to throw it a lot, obviously. Is, is that sort of one of those they're just going to get to you eventually, or anything that no, broke down? No, the big ones, no. The short ones, yeah, actually, you have to rally up and make the uh, receiver pay a price. And you have to watch how people put it the quarterback, and they can pay a price. That's how you defend passes. And we did that as we uh, developed a little bit. But no, there's no excuse for a, a play. You know, one was a blown coverage, the one went down the, the far sideline. Miami sideline, and there was one that went right through the middle of our uh, defense, so there's no excuse for that whatsoever. However, you would give up some yards if they're going to decide to throw every down, and they're good at it. They're going to throw uh, every down. He'll throw for a lot of yards and be an NFL player. Uh, Bo, over here on the right. Urban, the way that it started, obviously, in the first, not the way you wanted. What, what, do you think there was just maybe too much emotion for your guys? I mean, I see everybody obviously bouncing around. I know you were excited before the game. Was it possible that that's what happened out of the gates that kind of derailed a little bit? Can you be a little too emotional to start a game? No, I don't. I think you can. I've never really talked about that. I think emotion is one of the great things about college football. If you get too emotional with baseball, and then you'll attack it. You, know, you have to keep your, your mindset that baseball football, you can go. You can let it, you know, get the guy play a little harder and go. And I, two things. I think uh, without watching the film yet, I don't know how well we play, but I think, once again, giving them credit, they, they were doing a certain thing that was complicated with the linebackers and moving right to where we're running this play. So they had a, you, know, you have 10 months to prepare for a game and a lot of film to watch. Uh, they prepared very well. So that's what happened in the first, first quarter. Left over here, Jason. Can you just sort of give a quick assessment of Braxton throwing the ball? And also, kind of related to that, the receivers coming into the season, there were some questions about them. It looked like... Braxton had a couple of jump balls that guys went up and obviously Devin, but other guys as well went up and made some pretty nice catches on some jump balls. Yeah, he didn't throw as well as he's been throwing uh, in practice, so I anticipate that he will. He's 14 and 24. That's not, that's not good enough. For what we expect out of him, and I saw a couple of the uh, curveballs he threw down the field because he had a couple times had a hard time gripping it. Um, but 
but he'll get better. And uh, you can, I think you saw a couple glimpses of how accurate a passer he could be once we give him time and uh, he settles in a little bit. Over here to the right, Tim. Yeah, Herb, talk about Carl Sides. He could kind of come on, kind of you guys get going there when you need to in the second quarter. And then just someone get the mic back, maybe uh, talk about Travis Howard, Bradley Roby, delivered some play to cornerback uh, that kind of helped the game along. Carlos Hyde first, Tim, he was uh, he was a guy I'm disappointed he didn't get 100 yards. I thought he would. We were going to kind of feature him a little bit today. They were forced in some of those big runs that Braxton Miller had with tailback runs. So he's reading a certain player on the defense. If they overreact, sometimes it's that, sometimes it's a linebacker. And so a few carries got taken away because uh, Miami made a decision to force the quarterback to run and then have some extra defense players where, where they were. And that's what happened early in the game. Uh, we got a couple formations later that think of where we kind of have formation a little bit. We put, uh, that was a great sideline of adjustment. We, uh, our halftime, what we did is we put all our, our players in the boundary and ran a, that was a 90 or 80 yard run, whatever he had. Uh, uh, the two other guys, you, so Carlos Hyde is, he's going to be our future back here for a while. Did a nice job. Uh, Roby and Travis Howard, Coach Fickle just called out Travis Howard as one of our players that game on defense. This is obviously prior to watching the film. But, uh, and I love Travis. I uh, really got a lot of respect for him, but he was not a great player the last year. He did not play great. And uh, he's got great ability. So a player, a kid with great ability that doesn't play great, there's a problem. Something's uh, out of alignment there. And, and I can see it happening right now. That kid's turning into a very good player. You get that big play off, off the punt game, Brady Roby, the high snap and stuff. That's things you guys are pointing for. Which is just... Well, that's our punt block unit, and uh, we're trying to create a lot of angst in the long snapper and also the punter and all they're, they're coming and there's a lot coming and the guys that are coming are good players so uh, we didn't get one and that's disappointing because they changed their whole punt protection because I think they knew we were going to come after it but uh, that was just a lot of momentum I mean, that kind of flipped the game when that, that occurred. Far left, Doug Urban, you said that you were glad that Braxton was able to stay positive through stuff. How were you in the first quarter? Were you confident that you guys would find it or were you getting Frustrated with the offense for the first four drives? Well, I just wanted to know what was happening, you know, because I, I knew there was something on defense. And, you know, we'll meet as a staff, we have to do better, so what exactly was happening. But no, I wasn't as, I wasn't as positive as Braxton was. And uh, it's nice to have your quarterback stand right when they say, you know, he'll be fine, and I kind of just liked his demeanor. So, uh, no, that was very disappointing. That first, uh, first quarter was, uh, I'm not sure we're at five yards, but probably something. Lost yardage plays and just lack of production. Overthrown ball here. Just uh, that was not a good first quarter, obviously. Far right over here, Austin. Herbie, you've talked a lot about the attitude that Nate Wiggs has had this week and trying to come back from that injury. Uh, how gratifying was that for you to see and oh, then evaluate it. what he could do with his clear net? Yeah, I love, I love I love Nate. I love the fact that he's a warrior, that he loves Ohio State, that uh, he's doing the best he can. And uh, I like the fact that uh, Coach Fickle and Coach uh, Bray will have enough confidence getting the game. Played more snaps than I thought he would. That must have been he felt good and had a big smile on his face and knocked the rust off him. Because he hasn't practiced a whole lot. But, uh, I, I'll let you know how he played on the next week's press conference. Far left, Paul. Urban, uh, first quarter aside, was there a, a moment where you allowed yourself today to take off the headset, so to speak, and just kind of soak in your return to all this? Yeah, I think the end of the third quarter when we were playing fairly well. Years and years, I always remember the change of the third to fourth quarter, what happens in that stadium. And uh, that's about it, though. Doug, yep. right. if you can take us through the last play, the first half there, uh, had a chance to be kind of a deflated play, but yeah. again, it came out second half a little strong. Yeah, Ohio State should be able to block it in from the one. That's very, very, I almost forgot about that next one. We went down. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad. That's, that's absolutely non negotiable nonsense. And that, that'll be. We'll hit that with a sledgehammer on us Sunday because that can't happen. And I, I just flat looked at the lineman and I don't know what happened. I couldn't see. But the Ohio State University with the 220 pound, 230 pound tailback was smashing in from the one yard line. Uh, and that didn't happen without taking any credit away from our opponents. Or, and then the whole world knew we were doing it, but uh, that's part of the deal at the moment. I wanted to see if our lineman do it. Steve? Yeah. I want to ask about Braxton, uh, the style of play, running the football that many times he's going to get smacked around a little bit. Uh, he left the game, what was it, third quarter? I think he had a couple of plays he came off the field. Was it cramps or yeah. what, what is his situation again? Yeah, we ran Braxton too many times, uh, 17. You know, we like to in the 10 to 12 range is where we like to 
Uh, very few of those were direct runs. Uh, those are some summer scrambles, and uh, some were part of the run read game where you have to read some defensive players. So 17 is a lot. I uh, just cramped up. Uh, that's a lot of running in that humidity that we experienced today. He'll be fine. Bill, front here. When Braxton was encouraging you, I guess, in the first quarter, you know, it's going to be fine. Was it hard for you to maintain that optimism? We have a long time to coach here and get this thing going and starts out that way to leave. Well, I just was trying to fix the problem. You know, instead of just whining or complaining or screaming, we don't do that. We just know what is exactly happening. And if I thought it was because they weren't playing hard, then there's a lot of screaming, throwing things, and everything else. But it was they were playing hard, but it was, I, I think, and I'll come back in, uh, next week. And I just think they were doing some pretty good things defensively, and we were having some mis miscues. You know, some guys were not missing a block here, doing something wrong, so we'll get it fixed. Far left, Marla? I was just wondering. Were you anxious, nervous, anything last night, or just anything you could learn on about just the, the up and, you know, upcoming day? Like yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> sleep at all? Yeah, I slept pretty good. Well, I like this team. I like these guys. I like your like that. You sleep pretty good. So yeah, I was anxious for the day. I'm glad that the fans enjoyed a decent day. I was worried about the weather and how we would adjust to weather issues, and, and I just wanted a good day for Ohio State football. So you were just thinking about them and not about you? I don't think about me. A couple more questions, Bill, and then Bob. Braxton left, left a lot. Some completions uh, out there and had, had some jump ball catches. And yet he put up fantasy league numbers. Can you project all this what he can be? Well, the biggest thing I, we had to see is Evan Spencer go up and make a play. We saw Jake Stomper make a few. Well, was going to, Philly Brown Philly, Philly Brown had a good day. Seven catches, 87 yards is good. Evan, the, the best one I'm so excited about is Devin Smith. You talk about getting it in practice now the last six months. He's been getting it in the worst way. Because he has to be a player for us. And he's a good dude. Our, our Tom Herman called him up and uh, just he did play well. And that was, I mean, I haven't seen the highlight of it. Is that, that's a ESPN, right? That's a. Oh, yeah. Green into the five. Yeah. Is that right? That's, uh, he needed that. He needed that. We needed that, but I'm just, I'm, I'm happy for him. Every great athlete at some point has that moment where he becomes, you know, average to good, good to much better than that. Now, I don't know where he's at in his progression. Uh, it's certainly not going to be great yet, but I think that guy ended up being a really good player for us because he has to be. He's got the God-given skills to be a very good player. Far left, Brandon. Uh, Coach, I just wanted to ask you about Zach Warren getting into the end zone. Did you take some, some you know, personal gratification in that? Absolutely. I love Zach Warren. We, we, uh, we had to do that. Uh, I'm not sure how many carries how did he do today. <coughs> We had a bunch of runs. I think we had four or five runs early in the game called to him, and the defense gave us when the quarterback pulled it. But uh, Zach Warren carried the ball. He's a good runner. He's a good runner. And, uh, he's a Buckeye, and he deserves to get it. Uh, was that the first one ever? First, first touchdown? Yes, second carry. Second carry. Yeah, the first one ever. <laughs> second carry is for the place for us to touch Oh, yeah, carried early in the game. Two straight plays. Third all time. First rushing touchdown. Uh, that's good, good for him. I didn't know. I, I thought I heard someone say first rushing touchdown. But he's just watch him play. He's got good. He's a nifty guy. He's a. And that wasn't a gimme. Uh, he'll do a gift every once in a while. That was not a gift. That's a, he's a good player. Last question, Bob. I, I, you look like you're really enjoying the alma mater. And I'm just wondering if that was the, the one point when you finally got to the point where you could enjoy being. Well, I've been enjoying being a Ohio State coach for about seven months now, so uh, that was a, I don't want to deflate that moment because it's a great moment. I'm holding a bunch of guys I care about, love our players. I had two good guys next to me, and, and uh, Goble was to my left. I just looked at him, and I just love that guy. I love, I love, there's a lot of guys on this team I have a lot of respect for. And to do the same thing on the water, I'm a graduate, and the uh, fight's on. That was a special moment. And we got to see the fight's on in the locker room as well. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.